are two and a half hours from the city of St. Paul at Glacial Ridge Growers, where they're restoring the prairie one backyard at a time. And I'm here with Gene Stark today, and Gene's going to show us around his place. So Gene, will you show us? I will. So what are we in now? This, what would you call this greenhouse? Well, this is a greenhouse that we actually produce a lot of uh, annual plants in, hanging baskets and annuals that are shipped out now in the spring. Uh, we produce a pretty wide variety of, of material besides just natives. So. And how much of this stuff will actually come to the St. Paul Farmers Market? Oh, I don't know. The percentage-wise probably is fairly small that actually gets sold at the market itself. However, uh, we do sell a lot of uh, our specialty things down there, particularly our natives and our perennials and um, a lot of our specialty vegetables as well as organic vegetables too. So. so what made you decide to start doing natives? You've Actually, you've been doing natives this whole time, correct? Mm -hmm. For yep. how many years? Oh, probably we've been doing natives for 30 years, 30 but years. more intensively over the last probably eight or nine years that we've really been producing a wide range of natives. And what made you decide to increase production of natives? Well, I think there's a lot of interest in growing natives right now. There's lots of uh, restoration projects going on. Natives are really well adapted to restoring lakeshore areas. They're good for rain garden um, you know, a applications. And so there's a lot of interest in them. And, and we, we just feel it's really fun to grow them. We, we enjoy them a lot. So. And you have your own restoration project going on here as well, correct? Yeah, we've got about 120 acres here that's pretty much all back into native um, plant material. Uh, we're also restoring all the, all the wetlands on our, on our land too, so uh, that's kind of an interesting project. And what made you decide to do that? Just the... Uh, just thought it'd be nice to leave it kind of the way it's supposed to be, or the way we think it ought to be anyway, and uh, it's nice to be out here where, the, where you've got native plants. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the production manager here at Glacial Ridge Growers. Um, what I'm doing right now is spot watering before the end of the day. Um, in these houses here that we have the greenery in, get very hot, things dry out a lot. Uh, we check them approximately four o'clock every afternoon. We start checking all our houses. At the other end of this house, you'll see that there's a fan. The fan is going um, with that fan uh, when it's 80 degrees outside. It hits about 125 degrees at the other end of the house, so things dry out traumatically in here. So here we are in the organic section and there's all kinds of beautiful stuff here. I see some Swiss chard and some kale and some squash and basil and now you've been doing organic for a long time, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. yep. Um, what made you decide to start doing organic? Uh, we just feel it's a it's a environmentally good thing. It's uh, it's nice to be working in greenhouses that don't have a lot of chemicals in them. Uh, we think that the food that gets produced is is high quality. Um, we just feel it's a good sustainable way to do it. So this is one of my favorites: summer squash, yellow summer squash. And um, I noticed that it has a little tag on it: USDA certified organic. Are all of your organics certified? Uh, yeah, the ones that we certify have got to have that specific tag on them. They have to have the USDA label on them and uh, they have to be identified as such. So you use insects for pest control? Yes, we do. Yeah, we release beneficial insects. Uh, my son Jeremiah really uh, pretty much uh, runs that whole program and he can tell you a lot about uh, what insects we use and, and how they function out here in the greenhouse for us. So let's go talk to Jeremiah. Are the go-to guy to talk about insects and natural pest control. Yep, yeah, we've uh, had an IPM program for 20, 25 years now, so it's uh, it's been something that we've uh, been able to use in the greenhouse pretty effectively to control all the different sorts of pests. What kind of pests are you mostly trying to control? Uh, number one would be aphids um, and thrips. What and is then, an aphid? Uh, aphid is a small insect. It, it basically it feeds by sucking the juice out of the leaves of plants, and uh, doesn't usually kill plants, but it'll deform them enough so people don't want, you know, they're, they're basically ugly, ugly makes, plants. Makes holes in them or yeah. something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and what kind of insects kill aphids? Uh, we use a lot of different like paras parasitic wasps, um, some nematoids, uh, ladybugs. Oh. Ladybugs are probably the number one 
bug that we release in the greenhouse. So, but you don't have any issues with ladybugs? Are they pretty innocuous as far as causing damage to plants? They prey on other insects. That's uh, their number one food is aphids, actually. Ah, so perfect. Yep. And they're cute. So, <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the guidelines as far as you know? How do I make my garden really grow? Are there certain things I should avoid growing together? Or? I think the first thing you want to do is make sure that you get your soil built up, um, add as much compost as you can, any kind of organic matter. That, that, if you can do that, most things will grow pretty well. Um, the things that typically people grow in Minnesota will grow in an organic garden just as well as anybody else's garden. So just plant what you like to eat, that's what I'd say. I've been told that I have acidic soil. Mm -hmm. Are there certain things that, if I come down to the market and I, and I tell you all about my soil, will you tell me what I can grow and what I can't? Yeah, we probably can do that. You know, the best thing is to try to have a soil that's fairly middle range and you can usually grow most of the uh, common vegetables with that. Uh, there are some things that do better in an in acidic soil and if you have that, you're probably maybe in this area more unique than anybody else. You could probably grow some things like blueberries and probably the peppers will do pretty well for you. Oh. But um, otherwise, um, just a typical soil is, is what you want. You know? So you guys also do your own canning and freezing just mm -hmm. for your family. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. hunting. Yeah, well, we right? kind of produce all of our food right out here. So Probably attract a lot of wild animals with all the prairie grasses you have. Yeah, yeah we've got uh, all of our farmers pretty much back into native uh, plant material and uh, we're restoring all the wetlands out there. So it's, it's, it's a good, good habitat out there. I, this is good living. I envy your life. <laughs> this is great. Mm -hmm.